And once again, I want to thank Rebecca tremendously for everything. I, David made a beautiful statement, so I, I absolutely agree with everything he said and more. And uh, I actually, my kind of at the end of the day yesterday, I, I, I just wanted to make sure that Rebecca was happy. And I was like, okay, she's happy. It's all good. We're good. Um, and yes, yesterday was truly an extraordinary day, and so is today so far. So I hope this doesn't uh, put the kibosh on that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dyer, who called herself my Sherpa, said as we stood by the back entrance of the Marianne House, we're in the oldest part of service quarters. A few moments earlier, I'd taken a cocktail of targeted drugs, temporarily exciting parts of the frontal and temporal lobes, including the auditory cortex, the hippocampus, and the amygdala. The Marianne House is an occult mental construct, a model named after Marianne Amateur, esteemed phonomagus, in honor of her psychoacoustic experiments. Peregrinating through its room, something I did once in a while, is tantamount to walking through your neuromusical system, the brain vectors which collude to produce your perceptual reality of music. The model is a prosthetic, giving you returns on your operating system, even if unpredictably skewed. Lamina once explained it to me as a quantum world of questions in which the decoding of the room's message produces the person. The manifestation of this house model was first noticed in so-called hypermusiac patients with particularly enlarged auditory choruses, some of whom had also been diagnosed with Williams syndrome. Lamin Amuse. This room is a mind of its own and keeps you in train, keeps you playing in time by coordinating the chaos of signals. And it's an emotional early warning detector, too. It's priming you in a certain direction. The music, this time, severely mangled yet intimately familiar. Glitched out perversions of dense, hyper-associative music conjured long ago, now beginning to saturate my thought body and navigation. Unstable. Precarious. Lamina and pause at the bottom of the basement stairs. These are some of the more physically wrought of your numbers, your body contorted, hyperspasmic, spastically splayed across the keyboard. But they've all been reduced, stripped into MIDI sequences. All this left is pitch, timing, and dynamic, is three parametric affordances. The extra musical disappeared, gone forever. It's a huge loss, perceptually speaking. On the other hand, maybe it all just boils down to speeds of attack and their timings, as my piano teacher used to say in his Occam's Razor mode. Dynamic is called velocity, after all, in mini memory. Think of this translation as an adversarial input, a signal superimposed onto the original, like in machine learning, that induces misrecognition, weird perceptual completion. The extra musical. A quaint concept from the advent of so-called absolute music, a shorthand for the expulsion of the intolerable frictions and slippages engendered by literary, programmatic, political associations. A shorthand for cleansing. Not to mention all those unnameable filtering modes that brains and bodies by their very operation bring to musical processes. Lamb and amused by the boredom. The outside of music that can't be fully represented by the conventions of musical expression. This house tells you how the excluded make their way back in. It's not like when machine learners fail to detect objects hidden behind bigger objects. Here there are clues, remainders. You've seen Interstellar, the dust patterns, another higher dimension punching through, trying to communicate. You're infected now with a pareidolia machine, which detects salient information, or does it produce it in the first place? Regardless, this whole place radiates into the house through all those motivational expectation reward channels managed upstairs. In the house, the work of projecting this body into existence is done by you, almost autonomically. It turns out just enough has been stripped away from the music for your frontal machinations to be irresistibly compelled to complete the circuit. 
In each room, you try to resolve this anomalous signal into a coherently embodied set of actions. Opacity is an uncomfortable but necessary precondition. Lemon had declared on entering the parlor, it's like how color makes an appearance on black and white TV sets through moiré patterns. Something technically impossible, excluded from the affordances of that particular system, still gets smuggled in. That's good old meat. Ancient cunning intelligence, banned by Plato for its use of deception as a mode of navigating life and gaining advantage. It's about understanding what can be recuperated within any system, tractable information, then leveraging whatever you can of it by expending minimal effort. All these occult gestures get differently resolved. Look at what happens when an uncontrolled shape without rigor or measure, like a seizure, is recuperated as an act of virtuosity by a normative body once the visually offending, disturbing, non-normative body is withdrawn, erased. The non-intentional, instantly made intentional. It was true. The non-standard techniques employed, however achieved, their visual haptic traces obliterated, left the skeletal oral residue resolving into a nimbly fingered matter, yet caught in a fragmented, distracted temporal succession, a flitting insect time undercutting the virtuosity's effectiveness, unsettling it while also forestalling the stabilization of the coherent body image. Expectations were a malleable, tactile material in this room, the overall strategy of the music, inscrutable. Could syntactical strangeness be another form of mating, inducing the urge to jump listening scales and attend more cautiously to the potential motivations behind the sounds? My hands twinged, bent out of joint, laminal and emphatically. If you could only feel the physical tensions from resisting paralysis, it sounds so copacetic now. Don't forget, these rooms tend to focalize the ways in which you restore a normative image, even if obliquely, through the back door. <laughs> <laughs> You're fitting this fugitive music to a body, your body. You can skip the motor area. Your mirror neurons have already started feeling what this body will do. I started getting the feeling that Lamin had been talking it up a bit too much, trying to induce the fear of pareidolia herself, the perceptual completion which this music appeared especially permeable to. Top down, resetting the bottom up, if you know what I mean. But she was my Sherpa, and she had, after all, been to an actual brick and mortar Marianne house, one of Amateur's original music for sound joined rooms installations in St. Paul, Minnesota, in 1980, which sonically irradiated the Victorian house of conductor Dennis Russell Davies. She even attended her mini sound series at the Cap Street House in San Francisco, structured like a TV series evolving over six weekly iterations, exploring, as Marianne put it, Scenarios existing between acoustic space and mind interpreting pattern, subjective threshold, physiological resonance. These sonic soap operas mobilize spatial and acoustic memory in ways that few other artists had explored. Heard as though many miles away or felt inside the listener, her mantra perfectly described the effect of this room. The music had become gray, more abstract and clusteral, as it gained in visceral, invasive palpability. Its lack of discernible melodic or harmonic points of orientation returned you to the music's statistical impact. Memory couldn't be operationalized amidst such elusively gestural patterning, the byproduct of visually oriented extra-musical maneuvers cut from the signal long ago. The gauche ineptitude and low skill in the flaying around resisted complete transductive obliteration, even as it graduated to kinetic virtuosity by its successful bungling of coherent musical signposts. The overall impression was of an unretainable sameness, ungraspable in its infra-differentiation, violently returning you to spatial and gestural multitudes. A door at the back of the sunroom opened onto a small hallway leading deeper into the house, a small unassuming sitting room at the end of it. On entering, the music underwent a shocking spatial transformation such that it now seemed to radiate from yet another room, perhaps a bathroom behind a door at the back. An odd crossover into the warped spatialities of Marianne's world. Lamina whispered, this room powers that YouTube genre. You remember listening to this when hurling your cookies? I didn't. But Lamina's suggestion had the effect of resolving the music's anxiogenic politics of interference into a quasi-melodic linear message cleaned up. 
one of many possible adversarial overlays on a haphazard musical situation. Lamina drifted. People long for spatial emotional connections. The musicified Toto in the deserted mall is full of melancholic possibility. Marianne led the way towards thinking of music, space, and affect as being closely imbricated in the brain, merging into a coherent narrative, corpus collusion. She used the architectural features of a building to magnify the expressive features of music to expose its hidden affordances. Any message that rides this circuit has a better chance of getting encoded into memory, hence our proximity to the sunroom, which emotionally parses short-term memories and sends the successful ones packing into cold storage, therein constructing the basis for future comparisons. Emotional tagging, kind of a nightmare. The emotional pangs that have been tentatively surfacing now decisively located their object. A threshold of recognition crossed, a hidden lamentation, connecting the notes foregrounded by the music's spatial projection. Even if unknown, it elicited the feeling of something once heard. You can compute transitions between effectively valent states by bringing patterns in and out of the clustral noise that cash out into a particular speed, a gait, a feeling. Whole industries are dedicated to the minutia of paradolic triggering. Lamina slowed as we approached another exit. This door crosses over to another kind of house where things work differently. She pulled out a folded paper which, on the water, revealed the early 17th century diagram Egregoris Culturalis by Mercurius Scura. It's always on me. We're flipping into the realm of Imago, where illusions are marshaled. You can flip to the other side of the Mobius in many places. This is one of them. The door opened onto a staircase leading to the third topmost floor, constituted by two rooms facing each other. Lamina entered the left one first. It's a spatial counterpart to the room we started in, where your playing is concerned. This is where your body and its body, the body of the extra musical, start to intersect. In the polar bedroom where we are, interval sizes, distances between notes, adumbrate the physical contours of the hands executing these passages. Via mirror neurons, your upper body is slowly molding to its erratic fluxes. The temporal plane lives in the other bedroom, extra large in this house. Can you feel its disposition bleed through? Now, because it's the center of absolute pitch recognition, you're indexing the physical shapes you're receiving here to precise locations on the keyboard, clarifying even more the kinetic affordances, the bodies necessary to make it happen. The music's physical coordinates unrelentingly assert themselves through the medic operation of establishing stable pitch centers through repetition in order to contour the extensive limits of the forearms. More importantly, these overheated zones place into relief the incautious side swipes, collateral clusters that inevitably accompany their enactment, thereby materializing hints of the unstable, febrile, clumsy body that rendered them. The accidents through which the body could surface as if in dialogue with my querying, the music sporadically broke out into machinically stuttering formations, drones with tensile activity teeming inside. Lamina interrupted. It's not echo, it's uncontrollable shaking, tremors with the will of their own. This reductive ecology you're enmeshed in has resolved as echo and absolved you in the process. Lamina continued as we descended another darker staircase at the end of the hall. There are two musics in one, one version for this world, another for one to come. <laughs> one, exoteric, offering a plausible musically compliant narrative. The other, esoteric, a complex concatenation of affective and gestural implicities, only knowable through skillful, speculative reconstruction. <laughs> There's a shadow piece dormant only partially and paradoxically accessible once its perversion, occultation, transduction has been accomplished. Steganophonic subterfuge. The suppressed finding its way back in. As we approached the two grand pianos in the middle of the room, the music erupted into a wild peroration contorting my entire upper body as if from the inside, like an active probing for vectors of application was underway. This area insulates the temporal from the frontal. There's a back channel to the parlor through that door. 
Regulation of the body's homeostasis, which connects motor control, self-awareness, cognitive function, interpersonal experience, subjective emotional experience, body representation, empathy. It's kind of an affective nexus for emergent embodiments of the alien variety. A transitional portal linking the recognition of emotional expressions by the mirror neuron system with the limbic system involved in generating them. This is the room that makes an addict. Laminus smirked. I haven't been totally straight with you. These aren't reduced performances of yours at all, exactly. They're the products of an unsupervised machine learning autoencoding process that failed to generate accurate likenesses of your plane, but instead began at a critical point, developing self-assembling logics extrapolated from the transduced remains. We're getting all the body mapping data from you this time, from your head down to the tips of your fingers. The way your body copes with organisms the machine has degenerated is most interesting. When context is flushed and the records have been reconfigured, what stories rush in and how quickly do they become normalized into obscurity, melting into the background where they can stealthily ground future perceptions? Listen to this data breakout, intrinsically extra musical, wending its way through your musical complexes. The shiver, the chills you're feeling have nothing to do with pleasure. It's your insula ratifying the machine simulation's hold on your body, which emotionally locates, grounds it in a spatial reality it never yet has had to contend with. Your body, at the source of all of this, alienated back to you, reconstituting itself in you. <laughs>